I read all the studies of everything, on anything, anything out there, I read it. Um, I'm a nerd. So look, uh, even in the Olympics, back in the 70s and 80s, the Russians were told they had to learn anatomy and physiology and energy systems. The actual competitors, because they wanted, the coaches wanted the, 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 the athletes to know the body so well that they would perform better. So I kind of have the same theory in a sense. Anyone that trains with me knows, I want you guys to know what we do and why we do it. Because it's not what you do. A lot of gyms have this crap. But they don't do it this way. You know what I mean? So bottom line, there's something called an epic effect. And I'm going to break a, a big theory that's wrong out there. Everyone that wants to burn body fat, what's the first thing you think you're doing? What cardio? Yeah, cardio. Everybody wants to do cardio, right? How many, go, go to LA Fitness right now. There's probably every treadmill is full of, I call hamsters, just walking in the cage, right? But if you can talk and not sweat and just have a phone conversation while you're training, you're not training. You know, that's not real training. So really, let me show you something. That can actually make you fat. And I'll prove it, I'll prove it to you now. You want to drop fat, so drop fat so you increase your cardio. And by cardio, I just mean LSD. And not that kind of LSD. Low, slow distance. That just means anything for a long period of time is done slowly. So long, slow distance, we obviously try to avoid here. Here's why. Imagine we're both training for an hour. Say half of the group is training for an hour doing LSD, long, slow distance. Now stay with me. The other half is doing resistance training, what we just did. High intensity RRT, resistance training. We both train for one hour. And I'm going to explain to you where the myth of cardio came from. Cardio equipment came out and said, oh, well, if you do an hour of cardio, long, slow distance, you'll burn maybe a thousand calories an hour. And I'm just using a ballpark figure because me and him will burn, obviously I'll burn more calories than he would because I'm so, a thousand calories an hour for a long, slow distance. Everyone thought, holy shit, this is it. I'm going to burn a thousand calories in one hour? Maybe. But then there was something called an EPOC effect, which is excess post energy oxygen consumption. This long, slow distance cardio person burned a thousand. Us, resistance training, maybe burned half of that. So, obviously, you see where cardio came into play saying you'll burn more fat because you burn more calories. But it's not true. And here's why. The epic effect is what's important. Anyone that trains with me already knows this, but you guys are probably tight. Epoch effect, I want you to have to tax your energy systems, your muscles, your bone, your energy systems, your central nervous system, your skeletal system, your muscular system. The epoch effect only kicks in and goes high on high intensity workouts. So when you're pushing, that's why when you ride the bike slow, you're wasting your time. If you ride the bike hard, how'd you feel? Do you see the difference? You're out of breath, you can't breathe, and that's a good thing. So bottom line, you burn more calories in the hour. But guess who burns more hours in 24 to 72 hours? The high intensity resistance training. So you ever feel hungry after a session? Maybe that morning or the next day? You're hungry because your metabolism has been forced to increase. Right? So actually some of my clients don't fix that on their scales. Meaning they'll eat more because they feel hungry, hungrier more often. That's a bad thing, then, then you can't burn body fat. Make sense? So the epic effect for the next couple days is way higher after a session like this than if you go run five miles real slow. So I'm not saying cardio is bad, but it can be, and here's why. All those hamsters walking on the treadmills aren't going to get results. In six months of walking, they're not going to change. Look at them now, and then look at them in three months. Guess what changes? Nothing. Maybe their iPod music. Right? So bottom line, what's that going to do to them mentally and psychologically? They're going to think, I put an hour in every day, five hours a week. I'm eating better, I'm drinking my water, and nothing has changed. Nothing has changed because you didn't force the change. Your body, your skeletal system needs resistance. Right? You don't want to walk around frail and maybe not be able to pick something up or go do laundry and do everything that's functional in life. You need bone density. Girls too, you need lean body mass. Number one problem I have with females, I don't want to bulk. That's disrespectful to everyone that lifts weights and wants to bulk. Because you can't. These are both one pound. Guess, one's fat, guess which one's fat, which one's muscle? Small one's muscle, big one's fat. So bottom line, if you weigh 150, you start weight training. You might lose six inches, you might still weigh 150, but you may have shrunk. Because you gained muscle and lost fat. Make sense? But you will not bulk. How many bulky girls do you know? Very few. There's a couple, whether they're hitting steroids, or they're just genetically gifted with testosterone. 
but it's very rare. They shave every morning. They shave and hide from us. <laughs> but the point is, guys, my big point is the epic effect. Train higher intensity, so train harder for a shorter duration. So less, high intensity, less volume. Because remember, those, those long distance runners, guess what they all have in common? Shin splints, heel spurs, knee pain, back pain. I train two dozen of them. I know, I'm in the trenches with them every day fixing them from that bullshit running. Understand? Any questions on what we just went over? Yeah. Good. How many calories are you burning then over the 24 to 72 hours? Uh, you know what, honestly, I don't know an exact number, but it's a lot higher. I can, I can email you some studies, but it's a lot higher. And not to mention, like we talked about here, you're burning fat, increasing muscle, increasing bone density, increasing glycogen storage, which is energy when you work out. So when you work out, you feel like shit, like, uh, you feel like shit because you don't have glycogen stored, or sugar, or glucose. So what happens is your body runs out of it, tries to use muscle or protein, which is the worst thing. That's what we're trying to build, not eat. You know, you want to use glucose for your energy. That's it, and a little bit of fat later. So bottom line, guys, train harder, shorter duration. That's why I try to hurry these up in a sense. I always go as hard as you can for a short time. Because now, last final thought. You have something called a catabolic effect, or a catabolic state. It's cortisol. You guys have all trained. These are all depleted in glucose right now. Every one of these. If I checked your glucose sugar levels, it's low. Guess what the body does now? It shoots something called cortisol, or that thing that stores body fat. And it says, listen, we need, we need glucose. So it's right now you're trying to break down muscle tissue, which is bad. So that's why I tell all my clients, the second you're out of here, go eat something. And something quick, a little piece of orange, something sugary. You know, I, I wouldn't prefer white bread, but it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. You should eat a quick snack in your car. You should leave something in your car. Handful of grapes, handful of blueberries, a couple of strawberries. And then go home an hour later and eat dinner. Something healthy, you know? So glucose depletion, it's not actually a good thing. You want to replenish that, build muscle. All right. White bread is one of the first things that actually you could actually u utilize right after your workout. So what's that? White bread. You know what I mean? Uh, it's it gonna break down. Be more, but, but I'm saying, like, as compared to post workout, yeah, I mean, it just goes right to your glucose system, system and it sucks your body, your body sucks it right off. Yep. Endurance athletes are yep. square by that, you know? Yeah. Yep. I mean, like swimmers and stuff. But bottom line, I mean, for me, I'm gonna bring fruit to the gym. I'm gonna bring fruit in my car. I'm not gonna bring white bread. You know, it's simpler to me. I can stop a while. But whatever works, whatever you guys want. You know? <laughs> so bottom line, I want you guys to understand what we do and why we do it. Because it works. You know? Alright, going through some abs. Let's go.